Hello, welcome back to another Dark Souls 3 lore through. Did all my research and found out I just need to go back and talk to people after beating Sullivan. So we're going to do that, plus we'll level up because we have too many souls. So first we have to speak with Yuria. Speak, I did it off. Ah, greetings, our lord and liege. Good tidings. Thy spouse is ready. The time is ripe to greet her. The girl awaits thee in the hidden dark moon chamber of Anno Londo. So thou mayst a true monarch become. Ah, good to till we meet at May. So we're gonna go get married to Henri. We've helped her all along the way, and Grey Rat's back. Oh, then we're both safe and sound. Thank the gods for that. I don't like getting things so close. I might have died if it wasn't for that peculiar onion night. But in the end, it all paid off. Take a good look. There's sure to be of some use. Some more divine and hidden blessings. Lightning urn. Scholar's candlestick. A candlestick covered in ivory scales once used by the scholars of the great archives. This served as their guiding light as well as a tool of self-restraint. Even today, wielders of this weapon benefit from the resulting sorcery strengthening properties. Lothric Knight Sword, a well-crafted straight sword designed for thrusting attacks wielded by the venerable Knights of Lothric. The Knights of Lothric, with their drakes, once crushed anything that threatened their shores. Of course, that was a long, long time ago. Alter Great Sword of the Venerable Knights of Lothric, imbued with the strength of lightning, the trademark of dragon hunting. Very few have demonstrated the extreme strength and dexterity required for this weapon, even in the long history of the Lothric Knights. Uh, long spear wielded by the proud Lothric Knights. Lothric spear knights are known for their steadfastness, and this spear boosts the poise of the wielder. Oh, I hate the spear guys. Knight's crossbow. Crossbow used by the proud Knights of Lothric. It bears an elaborate gold design. The crossbow has been blessed with the power of lightning in anticipation of the use of lightning bolts. Lothric Knight Shield. Shield of the renowned Lothric Knights decorated with the royal crest. The Lothric Knights contend with dragons. I think we read this one before. And now he has Moonlight Arrow. Magical arrows said to have been used by Dark Moon Knights. Imbued with silver light, these arrows inflict magic damage. It is said that the long ago the god of the Dark Moon, Gwendolyn, wielding these arrows with a matching golden bow. Lightning has been a weapon of Dragon Slayers ever since the time of Gwyn. You can keep the ring. Okay. Goodbye. Um, I don't think we've been getting chunks. Oops. So we're still on that. We're going to wait to infuse until we get to Lothric, I think. Um, okay, it's fine. What's going on with Arena right now? Nope. Nope. Did we read the Saint's Ring, by the way? I saw that in a cutscene, and I'm not sure we read it. A ring bestowed upon a Kareem Saint. And Kareem the Saints give voice to the ancient tales. They oh, yeah. Take your books. It's on our stones. Wow. Well, yeah. <clears throat> Seems like Kareem has turned into Lindelder or Thuriland. Um. Oh, yeah. And also, I guess we have Pawn of Sullivan's Soul. Um... 
A ceremonial sword held in Pontiff Sullivan's left hand representing the judgment of the moon, but with magic far closer to sorcery than any existing lunar power, which to me is always just sorcery, but whatever. Its dark blue hues deeper than the darkest moon reflects Sorcerer Sullivan's true nature. Stance of judgment. Assume stance to unleash dark magic. Use normal attack for a lunging thrust and strong attack to emit side sweeping wave. So yeah, he had a fire sword and he had a blue sword. And here's his profaned great sword. A ceremonial sword held in Pontiff Sullivan's right hand, representing the profaned flame. Long ago, when Sullivan was yet a young sorcerer, he discovered the profane capital in an unfading flame below a distant tundra of Irithyll, and a burning ambition took root within him. Profane flame. Temporary summon the profane flame. Lunge forward and use strong attack to interrupt blade and flame. So now we're finding that Pawn of Sullivan is related to the profane capital. And um, we only know that Yorm's there and that um, uh, Sig Sigvert is going to head there as well. And, we'll. and we'll finish that up later. But, um, uh, yeah, um, in the profane capital, there is an unfading flame. That's interesting and new. So I'll be interested to see what's going on with that. Well said. Very well done, Hickman. Should have just done this at the end of last episode. Oh, gracious, passing fine ash thou hast given. Let this ash bestow nourishment. I only hope these new wares content thee. <laughs> Now we have large titanite. Washing pole. A stunning, unusually long katana forged in an eastern land. The extreme length of this blade provides immense range, but also renders the blade extremely fragile. Helm of favor. Helm of the pitiable embraced knight depicts in the affection of the goddess Fina. Adrift on a sea of isolation, only his faith in the love of his goddess remained true, and so the knight forsook all else. The fate is crafted to depict the goddess's embrace. The face is crafted to depict the goddess's embrace, qu quite ignoring the fact that her love is as fat, in fact, as fickle as the we weather. Ugh. Yeah, depicts the embrace. Depicts the affection of the goddess Athena. Adrift in a sea of isolation, only his faith and the love of his goddess remained true, and so the knight forsook all else. Depicts the affection of goddess Athena. Adrift in a sea of isolation. Yeah. Then we have the Eastern Helm from Sh Shiva. The exquisite craftsmanship and artistic design made these prized pieces in the collection of any nobleman. Offers excellent damage absorption, particularly from slashing attacks from katanas, which are commonly encountered threats in battles fought in the east. This special ring, crafted in an eastern land, is made of metal, but with a wood grain crest on its surface, slows equipment degradation. Wielders of swords originating in the same region follow practice of inscribing special words on the blades of their swords and are naturally drawn to this ring. Ashen one, be sure. Nice. Okay. So now... 
we're going to be happy that we made that shortcut. Or I am. <laughs> Damage boost. They don't like to enter the Dark Moon Tomb, I'm not sure why. Here's our pilgrim. Welcome, our gracious lord. Your spouse awaits you. You are very near. Please. Take the sword of a vow. May you be the truest lord of Londor yet. I've never even been to Londor. <laughs> Is that meant to be in her hands? Sword of a vow, which looks a lot like um, the crucifixion um like crosses in the crucifixion woods a little bit. We'll take a look at it closer. Your spout may. Is it? Yeah, it's a key item. Rite of Woodlock gives birth to a true hollow lord. Ceremonial sword of Londor cannot be equipped as a weapon. It is said that a rite of wedlock will presage a true hollow lord. Your spouse's name is Henri, who patiently awaits a rightful lord deep within the mausoleum. And yeah, we can see there it's a circle with a line through it, which is kind of the way that the crucifixion was. Well, she's just taking a little nap before our wedding. That's interesting. Oh, her head's been cut off. <clears throat> or her helmet's off and, and she just has her face covered. Is she alive? Like... Let's do the right of a vowel. How do I know how to do this? Three dark sigils. We shoved it into her face and got her dark sigils, which we're going to need. But did Henri find Aldrich and get her redemption?
dead. And kiss this chameleon. Uh, lost sorcery from Oasil, land of ancient golden sorceries. Transform something into something inconspicuous. Far from informally developed, this magic was instead born to the mischief of a young girl who sought relief from the solitude of the woods at dusk. Huh. That is a new description. That's cool. That that's how dusk got her name, and that she created some of those sorceries. At least that one. Alright, well... Just moving right along here with the story. This looks familiar too. It's almost like we're back in Anorlando. It feels so real. So, um, there's the ended settlement, Lothric. There's where we fought Pawn of Sullivan. And you can see that um, it's got that kind of circular window on the top, which is very similar to this window. There's also this tower over here that looks like it has a bonfire on it. And this looks just like Anorlando is, I guess, the other thing I haven't been saying. So if you haven't been convinced up until now... Um, yeah, it says, yeah, we're in Anorlando. Okay. I guess... There's some people that probably don't follow the story very closely when playing, obviously. And, um... You know, it probably would be a surprise to some people. Oh, by the way, um... Yeah. I don't know why this is like this. You can look down over here, Hill, though. Um, like we've seen hidden walls before, or hidden walkways before in, uh, in the Crystal Cave, and I don't really know what that was all about, but, yeah, I don't know. So there's this lady here. that has a tail and looks a lot like uh, just in general like evokes uh, Priscilla doesn't look exactly like her but name thyself stranger I am Yoshka, captain of the dark moon night mm. what beckon thee to such a place I'm a dark moon. Thou thinks too. Very well. Captain, to this nightless company I remain. I will grant thee purpose. Thou journeyed far. Hear my voice. If thou shalt swear by the covenant to become a shadow of Father Gwyn, and Sister Guinevere, mm. a blade that shall hunt the foes of our lords. Then I place thee under the aegis and the power of the Dark Moon. Father Gwyn and Sister Guinevere? 
art now a blade of the dark moon. The only knight of our company. <laughs> Swear this oath and face thy solemn duty. There we are. Oh, good blade of the dark moon. Welcome home. Thank you. If I can provide thee succor, only tell me how. Ooh, that's a little dirty. Long ago, our father Gwyn, lamenting the waning of the fire, became cinder of his own will. Now, the fire is linked by the champions who have come in his stead. Such is the will of father and the gods. And so the Dark Moon Knights took arms to watch over those who link the fire. But long ago, our company lost its last proper knight. Only its covenant was preserved to this day, until the time of thy visit. Erdem taketh many forms, indeed. So I don't know if any of that was, uh, you know, new information or anything, but like, it isn't, I mean, the new information is that she's Gwyn's daughter. Um, I mean, we've had the thing that says Gwyn's last born, describing Gwendolyn. So, and Gwen definitely died after, like, I don't think he even knew Gwendolyn all that much. Like, that's right around the time that he died. And so, Yorshka is also a daughter of Gwen somehow. Uh, there's additional stuff we'll come across in this game that is starting to, like, change kind of what what's going on in Dark Souls 1. I'm not really sure what the explanation for this is, but uh, yeah, daughter of Gwen, or at least she believes she is, maybe she isn't. May I pose thee a question? This tower, this prison, stands tall and solitary, the contraption bridging its lower reaches long unmoving. So, by what path didst thou here ascend? I just flew here like a bird. Art thou a creature of the air? Or other winged thing? I serve Velka. I can fly like a crow. Oh my. I imagined it might be so. Then thou art a dragon? Or perhaps a crow? A crow. Well, whatever thou beest. Thou art wondrous strange, yet strangely familiar, visitor. <laughs> you look like Priscilla. Long ago, our Natsa and Erdem. Off so soon, may the dark moon watch over thee. Okay. Great. Painting Guardian's Curved Sword. A weapon described in legends passed down amongst heretics, wielded by the Painting Guardians. A uniquely shaped weapon with a flat tip. Chain Dance. Execute relentless consequence consecutive attacks while tracing a circle in a unique dance of deadly grace. That's kind of what the Irithyll knights do to... oops. And the painting guardian set. I wonder if the painting guardians are kind of like descendant of these guys. Attire from the painting guardians whose forms are described in the mythology of heretics. A smooth Heretics, yeah, the ones cast into the painting of Ariamus. A smooth pale hood that deters magic. The hunchbacked teller of ancient tales describes unwanted souls who are unwelcome across the lands and are eventually drawn into a cold and painted world. Um... <laughs> OK. 
Okay. Yeah, I mean, this is needless, like, okay. Drop down the hallway, good. So now that I've been married, uh, by the way, the, the, the one statue in the corner is gone. Because uh, that was the pilgrim. Okay. Let's go to Ann Orlando. And see what is to be found here. I used to fight these these knights so often for their uh, for their farming proof of Concord kept. So I have my pattern. I just love if I got <laughs> I got a proof of Concord from that. So there's sorry, it's time for my cats to eat, so they're gonna be noisy for a little bit. Um, so this is a red-eyed knight. He's much harder. I guess. There's just a rhythm that you get into with this game, I feel, that I personally do. That just, sometimes it just, uh, there's just this like, I don't know, it's like meditative or whatever. You can just intuit the, uh, the timing of stuff. Any chunks here, like in the original? Any batwing demons? And yes, this is very, very sad. Um, but yeah, we have the uh, the blacksmith here, dead, and in his hand is giant's coal. It is said that the giant blacksmith of Anorlando was once the blacksmith of the gods. Give to the blacksmith and the shrine to allow the use of gems for lightning, simple, and chaos infusion. I realize that's a dual bow, but that was meant to represent my respect. Okay. Um, and there's all this grime and gook all over everything in here. Probably from Aldrich himself. Someone repaired the window. It's weird, it feels like I've been here before. And there's no door. wherever it's supposed to be. <laughs> Moonlight arrows here. Get our final Estus shard. And that thing already fell down, great. Okay, another one of like Aldrich's dark thing. I'm gonna attempt to fight him out here. 
Oh, that really... Okay, well at least I opened the door. That, yeah, I... That's why I tried to cheese him that one time. He, uh... With two kind of hits from him, you can get cursed real quickly. Yeah, sometimes he does that where he zooms into your view, and that can cause him to... Take some damage from falling on the stairs there. Oh my gosh. This silly thing. So I should grab this too. There's also slams on the ceiling. Where is it? What happened? Okay, there it is. I can't really cheese it here, so we'll just have to... Don't get cursed. That was lucky. Oh, come now. I had one queued up roll there. That caused me to take that last hit. I suppose I could try to replace it with some armor that like has some dark resist. Come on. If that's like more than
Because slams do a lot of damage, but no dark damage. did protect me from death. Thank gosh. Oh no. If I get hit one more time, I'm dead. Or not. Just dive or something. You weren't programmed to fight on the stairs, were you? Aldrich's Ruby. We got his Sapphire before. A malformed ring left by Aldrich, saying to the deep, recovers HP from critical attacks. Aldrich, infamous for his appetite for flesh, apparently had the desire to share with others his joy of imbibing the final shit. We read that one before. Okay, well we have five Estus, so we're not going to do this. Um, one more time, we got to kill these knights. <laughs> well, hopefully only one more. And we can end this episode with Aldrich. Um, I'm assuming you can summon people for this fight, so I might try that. Right, gotta do these guys. There we go. Okay, now do your long spear. That will work. Oh, Silver Knight Leggings. Don't know that gives new lore, but. I don't think you can parry that, by the way. <laughs> Alright, we'll just have to deal with that. Wrath of the Gods. Oh, there's two guys here. I guess this will have to do. There's no one here to summon. So, I mean, Solari used to be here. Oh my god. 
Okay. Is there anything up there? There is an item there. Okay, well, I'm gonna grab it after the fight. Um... And I guess I'm just gonna try to summon a regular person. Ooh, too far. Okay. Okay. Sure, getting a lot of tight night shards. Okay, and now we'll just summon someone here. Aha. Now I wish to be online. Hmm. Do I think I can beat Aldrich by myself, having not played him for a few years? I don't think so. We can try, if we can't get anyone. <laughs> Someone's farming with a Smo's hammer. I feel like I was really late to get that one. Oh. My sword. All right. Well, let's do this Yuri Knight Yomo. Check this Aldrich fool out. Yep, looks like Gwendolyn. Aldrich always spawns in the opposite corner that you're at. That's a powerful one too. That obviously is a terrible attack. I'm glad it went with Momo and not me. So obviously this boss evokes uh, uh, Gwendolyn a lot. It obviously looks like Gwendolyn. And uses similar attacks, but the, the sword um, also looks like um, um, Nito's sword. So it seems like perhaps Aldrich would have feasted on 
multiple. Uh, gods. So we get Cinders of the Lord, Soul of Aldrich, and Sunlight Metal. Cinders of the Lord left by Aldrich, Devourer of Gods. If the Lords may, will not return to their thrones themselves, let them return as Cinders. Aldrich became a Lord by devouring men, which was disillusioned with his throne, and so took to devouring gods instead. When Aldrich ruminated on the fading of the fire, it inspired visions of a coming age of the deep sea. He knew the path would be arduous, but he had no fear. He would devour the gods himself. So that's another reference to the deep sea and the deep. And we saw a deep sea or a water pool with deep in it in the Cathedral of the Deep. And it seems like he was visited with a like um, a vision uh, through his meditation on the fading of the fire. And um, my initial take on this, I don't know if there's an official word on this in the guide or in whatever. Um, I don't know if Design Works has come out for Dark Souls 3 yet. Probably has. But um, I would assume that the Age of Fire is the Age of the Gods, the Age of Dark is the Age of Humans, and then there's this coming Age of the Deep Sea, which is deeper than humans, where the human dregs fall lowest depths imaginable, lower than humanity, like it's the deepest, heaviest part of, of all things, I guess, humanity. Um, and that would be probably the usurpation of the fire. So not going another, not going through another cycle, but saying stopping it all together. And that might be the deep, like the absence of light and dark is the deep. Um, so yeah, we can see here Gwyn, Gwendolyn, and a, a missing statue for the war god, the firstborn. Um, let's see what's up here. We still have one for small and one for Orenstein, the big one and the small one. Um, the f the f favor set is already at the Handmaiden. So there's nothing up here. Let's go check out Guinevere's room. I doubt Guinevere is going to be there or any illusion of her because Gwendolyn is dead. And she indeed is not here. But the Sun Princess Ring is. And that's the one I didn't read in my first playthrough. Maybe it says the same thing. Ring associated with Guinevere, Princess of the Sunlight, and Eldest Daughter of Gwyn. Eldest Daughter. I mean, unless they're considering... Gwendolyn a daughter. I mean, it does imply that there's more than one daughter, too. Um, the ring is vaguely warm, like a beam of sunlight. Guinevere left her home with a great many other deities and became a wife and mother, raising several heavenly children. Heavenly. That is a key word, actually. But we haven't met any of the characters that are associated with that, so we'll just get to that when we get to it. She became the Queen of Blothric, you know. Um. So 
So there's two things we have to do here. Oh, thought he would stagger easier. He like always falls down. What's with everything drop dropping everything? Okay, we got yeah we got a deacon scare last time. I forgot to check that. Yeah, I'm just checking if there's anything else we missed. Skirt worn by deacons of the cathedral of the deep, worn on the inside of the deep red robe. In time, those dedicated to sealing away the horrors of the deep succumb to their very power. It seems that neither tending to the flame nor faith could save them. Oh, there's my stuff. I forgot that I had all that. I probably should have been careful about that, but... I let go of my thing just in time. Oh, nice. It's interesting they have Wrath of the Gods. Proof of Concord kept. And. Oh my god. <laughs> Don't die. Hmm. Do I have to go back? Hold on, let me quit out. Well, I guess we could just go back and then come back. Um, so let's talk to everyone. <laughs> And then um, do all of our stuff, and uh, then we might have to fight Aldrich again. Or we could do that in a loose ends video. Okay. Aldrich. Life Hunt Scythe, which is uh, Priscilla's weapon. Miracle of Aldrich, Devourer of Gods. Aldrich dreamt as he was slowly devoured the god of the dark moon. Right there, Aldrich. In his dream, he perceived the form of a young, pale girl in hiding. There's been a lot of debate about this, about what this means, whether he ate Priscilla or whether he perceived her when he ate Gwendolyn. And if he didn't eat her... It's very uh, impressive that he was able to formulate her miracle um, just from, like, ruminating, I guess. Seems like Aldrich was, like, he's a super important figure. It turned, it, it's unfortunate that he's such an evil guy because, um, yeah, he has a lot of stuff going for him. He can kind of envision things that no one else before him has envisioned. Longbow of Dark Moon Gwendolyn, who was gradually devoured by Aldrich. This golden bow is imbued with powerful magic and is most impressive with moonlight arrows. Dark Moon Arrow infuse a readied arrow with Dark Moon Essence, granting it magic damage and the ability to pierce shields. Ah, In fact. Now, now. Okay. <clears throat> I thought Cirrus would be here. Um, I guess not. Ah, <coughs> I presume my holy vows are sworn. Yes. Wonderful. Now thou art the true and deserving Lord of Hollows. Yay! With thy lordship, I prithee rest the fire from its mantle. Rest the fire. I like that. I, Uriah. I'm with you, Yuri of Londor. I agree for the same. I want the same thing that Pondor wants. Oh, Lord and Liege, I prithee play the usurper. I will. When the moment cometh to link the fire, rest it from its mantle. 
The Age of Fire was founded by the old gods, sustained by the linking of the fire. But the gods are no more, and the all-powerful fire deserveth a new heir. Our Lord of Hollows, it shall be who weareth the true face of mankind. Oh Lord, and I pray thee when the hour. Oh Lord and Liege, I pray thee. He won't say anything until we find the Grand Archives. You can ask them. Okay. Goodbye. No chunks. Do we get any more ashes? Nope. We're pretty much done with. Ah, there you are, unkindled one. I am. Heed my. Yeah. I mean, we. All this stuff is. Uh, I don't mean to say, but I hope for Mr. Yeah, we took everything care of all the major stuff in front of, uh, um, at the beginning of the episode. Um, okay. Very well done. Oh, 4,000. I forgot that I probably have... of these. Oops. Oh. <laughs> I like doubled what I had. I also have another Esther shard. Oh, and a coal. I think that's all. We get 12 in the playthrough. My, my. The coal of that peaceable giant. Seems like ages past. I imagine his passing was long ago. I miss the old bugger, I do. My thanks. I'll be sure this coal is put to good use. I'll be smithing weapons never before seen by the likes of ye. It's but a small service to pay my humble respects. <laughs> Pretty meek, I don't want to see my works. <laughs> well, he knew the blacksmith. I bet they met at a uh, blacksmith convention or whatever. Welcome. Very well, then. Farewell, Ash made of blood. I'm going to start incorporating uh, miracles into the next uh, um, episode, I think. Um, now that I'm kind of level leveling up faith a little bit more. Um, and we are to try and, I mean, this is just aimless. I guess, here, we'll end this episode here and I'll read up on some stuff. If I miss something, I miss something. Otherwise, we'll start the episode next time with fighting Aldrich again. Alright, thanks for watching and uh, I'll see you next episode. Bye.